Um, just wanted to check in as the defense continues to sort of settle in uh, to its identity. Um, what are some, maybe who are some notable people who have stepped in um, and really played a big factor? Uh, Greg Gaines initially obviously comes to mind yourself as well, mm. but um, what are you seeing from guys who um, have sort of settled themselves in and, and found their way? Um, Greg, well, like I said, Greg stepped in and, and it's been a dominant force since he stepped in. So I feel like he's, you know, number one on that list. And um, it's, uh, I mean, I feel like as a group, as as a whole, the more we've gotten out there, it's all been clicking and everyone's gotten, you know, in their groove, knowing where they can take take their chances of making these extra plays that's out there that you watch film and, and study for. It's been it's been great as a team. Like, you know what I mean? You saw Traven get that pick off the deflection. You know what I mean? His first career pick. Because him reading and he's playing inside with the tight end, voting in, he didn't come across. He let push it to the other side, sat there, waited, deflected the pass. Now he got to pick his first career pick. You know what I mean? Just playing the game smart and knowing what we're doing is just really what's keeping us all together and us working hard. And, you know, we're, you know, we go out there and fight <clears throat> and claw and do everything we can do in practice, you know, if we're banged up or whatnot, to make sure we're all good and we're all in one, all one and in sync. So, it's been great to see everyone come out there and do their thing. Just a quick follow up on that point for me. Um, obviously, overall as a team, you guys have been navigating uh, some chaos over the last few weeks. But as a defense, uh, when you guys are in those sudden change situations, uh, what is the um, what's the energy from afar? It seems like a very cool headedness. But what's the energy internally? Um. Honestly, you just hold them. I, I mean, we as a D line, the way we talk, you just hold them, hold them out. You don't want them to score. They get anything. We don't really want to get that field goal. So I know that I have my opportunity to try to do whatever I can, scratch claw, freaking just jump, <laughs> do whatever I can to block a field goal, try to get those three points off the board so we can hold, we can really be out there and we held them within within the stand. So honestly, it's just be like, you know. You know, don't break, don't bend, don't do nothing. We about to just hold this line of, of defense and we about to move them back instead of them coming in and trying to put some points on the board. Thanks, Aishan. You're welcome. Kevin. Hi, Aishan. Uh, as Jordan said, it looks like the defense has really hit its stride, found an identity. What has changed over the course of the season? Um. Just the focusness, level of focus. Is focus. Hold on. Uh, one sec. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it's. What was your question again? Sorry. What's changed for the defense over the course of the season? Uh, honestly, just us being locked, more locked in as it gets closer to the playoffs and the end of this, the regular season and stuff, knowing that it takes more attentiveness to get things in and really to get what we want to get done to accomplish, to move on to the next the next step of our in our goal, of what we want to accomplish. How much has the just the changes in personnel from last season? And then over the course of the season, how, how, how much has that been a factor in? in um, that all plays, happened? you know, everyone plays uh, a key from, you know, from all different parts of the staff. Staff. So honestly, it's just like I said, everyone's locked in knowing the goal, what we want to accomplish from any part, you know, no matter what. A team is different every year of the game, but the goal is still always the same. So it's really just focusing in on what you need to achieve and what we need to do to be the best Mm -hmm. And then um, finally, for me, uh, more on Greg Gaines, um, how would you describe his game? Um, I, I'm curious, when you look at him, his physique, do you see the talent that he uh, that he displays on the field? He displays. Um, I mean, a physique doesn't tell you anything. It just is a body look. But the way what shows you something is the film. The film is your physique. You know what I mean? That's that shows you your body play. That shows you your body type. Because once you go out there and see somebody play like a monster, they could be 125 pounds. But as long as they're playing like a monster, they're a monster. You see them as their monster. So Greg, that doesn't even matter. Greg's a, he's a, he's a dominant force in the middle. He's a great nose tackle.
one of the best in the leagues I uh, see. So to have him on our team and to be playing next to him and AD and all the other guys on the defense, it's been great for all of us. What does he do so well? Uh, his his knowledge of knowing what's knowing uh, formations, knowing the adjustments, knowing, you know, getting everybody set and then playing, playing to that, knowing that how we all play, how everyone reads everything. What's once we let's say if it's a run that's to the to the side, I'm in a I'm in a four or five and Greg's on that is in that shade. We're trying to squeeze that off and we're knowing what we're trying to play him and try to put that that run back in a bond to either come to one of us, just knowing the game. He knows the game well. He knows what he's doing. He knows what everyone else is doing. He's locked in on what he needs to do as himself to be a better teammate or to be a better player for the team. Very good. Thank you. Great. Hey, hey Sean, uh, nobody has really run the ball on you very well at all since the since the since the bye. And San Francisco is really the only team that ran the ball well on you since like mid October, early October. What's been the key to building a run defense that's sturdy like that and has been really doing a good job of controlling games at the line of scrimmage? Um, the will and want uh, technique, working on that, those things come into play because you know in the run, you know you can you can stop someone but still give them. You know, they can have like 80 some 90 yards, but really didn't stop them, but you win the game. But to really, you got to really sacrifice your body and everything willing to be better because you're going to get double teams. You're going to get in positions that most people don't get when they're not in the trenches in the inside. So it's really just the will and sacrifice of wanting, of wanting them not to get that yard, not to get that carry, not to get that touchdown, not to gain anything. It's just the verse of, instead of, you them knocking you two yards off the ball. You want to knock them two yards off the ball and just establish a new line of scrimmage and just being dominant. It's really just a want of wanting to be dominant. Uh, a month ago, when you guys had lost three straight, didn't win in November, did you see this this December coming? Did you see a 4-0 run coming? Could you still see that this was a team that was going to finish strong and hadn't really lost something with those three straight losses? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think about none of that. 4-0, 3-0, none of that matters. It's the next step, the next game, the next opportunity, the next. The only thing you do is just build to be better. You can't worry. You can't. You know what your mistakes are. You know what, what was the faults in that game. You know what, what needs to be better. So, honestly, it's just being better. I don't really care about records. Records don't really show what the body of work is done. You have to cut on the film to see those things. So, honestly, that's how I see it. Thanks, man. Stu? Hey, Sean, what's it like not only being uh, a team teammates with a running back like Sony Michelle and just kind of how his physical style of play can kind of extend drives and and, you know, keep you guys fresh. But also, you know, what is that like, you know, facing a running back like that, you know, as 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 a defender, if you've faced anyone similar to him? So how how does that benefit you? And, and what are the challenges? Sony is a, as that, a that? tough nose, hard nose running back. Um, I played him back in college and I felt that way since then. He's done nothing but gotten better. And I'll say one of the best things that he did when he came in was add on a little bit more weight to give him a little bit more power, a little bit more muscle mass to just tote it even more, to run through people's faces even more. So, and that's what you've been seeing. You've seen him run through people's faces. That's what, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, that matters in football. That wear, that wear and tear on the, Going in, you know, getting toting it. You run a ball 20 times a game, let's say 30 times a game. A D lineman towards the end of the game, they start to think about those things. Unless you really want you, you have to have the will mindset to want to stop something like that. And it, it takes that. And Sonny has that man, he has that mind where he just, I can't stop chugging, I can't stop chugging along. It's like a choo-choo train. Just choo, choo. He's just chugging along, man. <laughs> Shoney, I love I love having him in in the backfield, man. He's a great back. Thank you. You're welcome. Gary. Yeah. Hey Sean. Um, just curious from for you personally, what it's what this season has been like and uh, how you feel about I, I know you still have a couple more steps, but you're on a team that is going to the playoffs that has a chance to to go deep. So just from a personal perspective, how that's that, that's been for you. Um, 
you know, everyone wants to get in the dance that, that that's the first step. And then from having these two games left, it's just really just keep just keep juggling and working on our craft of, you know, finding these tools to to get ready for the playoffs, you know, to keep stacking things, keep building, keep getting better as a team, to getting that that feeling of momentum and everything going. Uh, it, it does matter. It's just having that cohesiveness and things. It really, it really do matter, I feel like. Um, personally, I just, I don't know. I don't worry about numbers. I just worry about just kicking ass in my head. I got to do whatever I can to kick ass. And if that, if that's need to be done anywhere on, on the board, across the line, anything, I don't care. I'm going to do it until I can't anymore. You know, I see football as modern day gladiators, you know, it's just, it's I need blood. I got to get it. I got to go get their blood smeared all over my face. That's how I see it. It's just, a, it's a war that it can't stop. And that's, that's how you got to keep, keep fighting and keep seeing it. I don't know. I'm a little different. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks very much. You're welcome. <laughs> and we'll wrap with Jordan. Hey, Aishan, thanks for taking the extra time. And I just have two really quick ones. Um, did you know Brandon Powell when you were in Detroit? I know he spent yeah. a little bit of time there. Yeah, I did. He was what behind can... Jamal Agnew. Jamal Agnew was teaching him as he was coming. He was his backup. It was He was a great player in Detroit. He The things that he, that he was not succeeding with, he's starting to succeed with those things. He's gotten better at at his, at his craft. And that's what you love to see from everybody, you know, being better players. Cause you never, you never stay the same. You're getting better or worse. And he's gotten better. And I think it's shown. Thank you. I definitely uh, just answered my question. And then uh, really quick, I've been asking players this throughout the course of the last couple of weeks, wondering not to put you on the spot, but do you have a, a favorite play that Cooper cup has made for you guys this year? Um, I think I think all of them are crucial. I feel like, you know, there's not one play that just is, is higher than the other because they all matter. None of no there's not one play that's matter more than the other. I feel like everything that we do is it lines up to what we need to do it to win. So and he does that. He's a he's a magnificent receiver. It's just I haven't seen someone like him in a minute. It's it's different to see it out of different body types. But your film is your physique, so. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Aishan.